Okay, so in this tutorial I will show you how I created this animation with these four rings and this spinning uh, sphere which is attached to this chain. And then the cat comes and uh, he knocks this over. Uh, many people, as you can see th that I posted this on Reddit and it got some upvotes. And many people in the comments asked me how I did it and the work, uh, there was some discussions about whether or not the chain is going through here. There's, uh, as you can see, it looks like it goes behind the ring. And in this video, I will just uh, go over the way I created this. The first thing I will do is I will create the cylinder and I will also create this standard redshift camera and I will change this focal length so it's not as distorted as it is right now and I will change this to 18. I will zoom out and now I can see this and it's not as distorted. I will change the height of this, the cylinder. The cylinder will be the platform for the four rings. And now I will create this torus object and I will change the pipe radius and I will create this slice here and I will adjust this so that there's a hole there. And if I change this orientation to plus X and move this up here, uh, I will disable this camera for now. Um, it's obvious that this torus object is too big uh, because I want to be able to fit four of these in the, on, this, uh, on this platform. So now I will change this work plane. I will disable this work plane grid so I can see this better. Let me just increase the segments and add this fillet here so it looks uh, better. So next I will add this dome light and in here I will drag uh, HDRI, HDRI map which I got from HDR Haven. And now if I click this render you can see that something can be already seen here and it looks a little bit similar to what I did in this, um, in what I created there. So I will change this, so I will rotate this dome map so the light comes from a different place. And now as you can see that there's a tiny, there's a tiny hole there. So I will move this down so it looks like it's really connected to the floor. So next I will add this wooden material to this um, platform here and I will create another redshift material and I will choose gold here. Not gold actually, no, it wasn't gold, it was copper. So now if I drag this on this ring, as you can see, it already looks more similar to, uh, to the, uh, the original creation. So now the next part is to uh, remember what's the next part and yes I have remembered it <laughs> and now I will go in here and I will enable this and I do believe that I have to go in this camera and select the focus distance and drag this torus object in and now if I increase the power no I have to set this uh, focus distance and now I will increase this radius and as you can see here uh, the background is blurry and if, if I zoom in even more, I will increase this. Uh, you can see that this part is also blurry. And if I disable this, yeah, you can see that there's this depth of field, which gives this more realism. So now I will just add this chain, which I created earlier. And now I think I'm ready to give this some animation. I will click this rotation and I will go forward, uh, let's say 120 frames and click 360, um, right, right 360, not click. And now I think I have to make this not with ease. Now uh, I, I have to re remove the ease. And now if I disable this, I will see this real time. Yeah, I think this will do actually. No, it won't. I will drag this uh, lower so it goes through the hole. And actually, this is a great uh, view for me to change the size of this ring. So it's a little closer and it looks like uh, it's, it's a, a little more accurate. So because for these types of animations, it's very important that it looks like it almost touches it, but it doesn't. So 
yeah this this is gonna be okay i think so now i will go in the timeline i will select all of them and i will change this to repeat which means that it's gonna loop forever they're gonna turn forever and also i have to do the same thing for the chain so now all of them will loop forever and if i want this to be in a different um, position when the chain is coming I, all I have to do is just select this and drag it uh, up and down, not up and down, but uh, forwards and backwards. And now I can ex match this exactly uh, in the place that I want it to be when the chain is coming. So I will do this, I will uh, drag it this far. And now, as you can see, when the chain is coming, uh, now what I have to do is I will change this slice slice um, opening here so that the chain is exactly at the at the place at the moment so so the chain goes exactly through the hole and actually the rings did have a lower amount of segments so that they look more like this and I, I believe that they had also this bevel deformer here and I will duplicate this on all of them so they look like this instead of the ones I had before. And now all I have to do is do the same thing for all of the other rings. I will go to the uh, place where in the animation where the ring is, uh, uh, when the ball is in the ring, I will select this particular uh, torus or ring and I'm, I will move this back so that the, the hole uh, matches the chain and I think I have to do it by just moving it this amount or yeah and now it looks like I also have to adjust this uh, opening of this um, of this hole adjust the size of this opening I mean so next I will do this for all other rings. So now, as you can see, the, all, all of the rings um, rotate in such a way that the chain passes through this hole here. And just to add some little variation to this, I think I can change the direction of, uh, for example, the torus number two. I can change this to minus 360 so that it rotates in the different no I actually have to change it from not zero what's going on here what's going on here minus 360 and now if I look at the animation yeah it's going in the different in a different direction so next I just added this cat with this paw animation which I got from Sketchfab uh, I, I did get uh, only the cat. Uh, I separated its paw and created a little bit of animation uh, so that it looks like it knocks over these rings. So now, if you play the animation, you can see that the rings are turning, then the cat looks, and then the, uh, the paw comes and it kind of, it looks like it knocks over the rings. Well, not yet, of course, you have to do the simulation of the rings, which I'm gonna, gonna do in the next step. And if you want to know how I animated this, if you want a tutorial on how I animated this uh, cat uh, paw, then I can do that. So just write it in the comments and I will do that. Now I will just add this rigid tag to this and collider tag to the cylinder. And now if I play the animation at, let's say, the point where the cat is touching this, and which point is this? I do believe that it's the it's this point, right? So at this moment, I want to be adding the animation, yeah, so that the ring falls down. And it should become dynamic only at the moment when the cat touches the ring. So let me add a keyframe here and a keyframe here. And let me move this so they are exactly one keyframe apart and now I will I will deselect this enabled so that the ring becomes 
dynamic only at the moment. No, it should be other way around. So now I will deselect this. Let me go in here so I can see it better. I will enable this here. So now, as you can see, the ring is turning and at this moment it's becoming it's it becomes dynamic and as you can see it falls down and the tricky part now actually all of this part is tricky now I have to go in this collision no dynamics and click custom initial velocity so that the ring when the cat touches it it kind of flies in the direction of this touch and the direction I believe is the Z direction because you can see that the Z axis is over here and it looks it kind of looks like that so I will increase this so now when the cat touches it it's obviously too small at this moment you so you have to add more let's say 45 and so this is better but I think I will ha add even more yeah this actually looks good so now all I have to do uh, now is to make all of these other rings also dynamic and I will do this in the same way actually I have to add this collider tag also to the chain so that uh, if something happens the chain can also kind of uh, knock them over so now if I look at this animation you can see that all of these chains also have this initial velocity which is not needed so I will disable this and now you can see that something's some it's, it's not really uh, exactly right because I think you first have to wait until this ring kind of uh, destroys all of this uh, rhythm let's say and so for that I just kept these ones disabled for longer than the first one so that when this I think I can leave this one as it is but I have to change this torus which is number two I have to um, delay the enabling of this dynamics a bit more so that it <laughs> it kind of goes uh, it kind of goes through I think I have to delay it even more yeah okay well you can play around with these settings so that they look right but this is the the the, the technique that I used uh, for this to be uh, animated so yeah I hope you like this uh, tutorial explanation and if you have any more questions on how exactly did I do what you want to go you want me to go in more depth uh, than I did here uh, then you can write that in the comments and I will listen to this to your comment and I will uh, do the tutorial so thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the next video actually I won't see you but you will see my voice